Daddy tried his best to make the money Being poor to him wasn't that funny He's always trying to get nice things Fancy rings and a big brown mink Pride was his companion, ego was his lie Fame was his god and fortune was his Christ Obsessed with the finer things A pauper that wants to be king He wanted the glory And all of the power Glory And all of the power Glory And all of the power Glory He just wanted the money, power, fame Fortune and a great name A house on a hill, fancy bills Nice briefcase, everyone would know him, call him a star He'll see his fans and wave from afar And yet he'll lose his soul, cause he'll do it all He'll do it all for the
Who got a splotchy beard? Me. Everybody coming. Mm. Light skin face. Ooh. Ooh. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> Ooh, boy, you pretty. Oh, who's handsome? Ooh. Mm hmm. If you're living insecure, cast your cares on the floor, doubt your doubts, not the king, the bag's already secured. Uh, uh, mic check, mic drop. Mm. What? Hey fam, we are back. It is Thursday night. It is time for Bible study. And you know what that means. The first thing that it means is that you should be sharing this right now with all of your family, with all of your friends, because the word is always better when we do it together. And so let's go. Let's do that right now. Also, you can hit the like button, the heart button, anything except for the angry button. Hit all of them right now <laughs> um, at the same time, because we want to make sure that we see that you are present and engaged. Hit us up also in the comment section. Um, I'm excited as always to have our people and I'm excited to be back in one space together. And so um, we want to welcome our elder Janae Adams. She's back with us tonight and she's an Adams now. And we've got Pastor Adrian Grant with us and we've got our sister Marissa with us. And that's really, really exciting. And um, we're ready to do this. We are in uh, session seven. Um, we have been breaking down the walls of insecurity for seven weeks. And my hope is as we're winding down that by now that you have really begun to ingest this word um, in a way that's not just entertainment, that is not just something just to say I heard the word, but that we really are beginning to live out the truth of this word because we find our security in Jesus alone. Yeah. We find our security in Jesus alone. Again, I've said it for several weeks. This is not about us hyping ourselves up to make ourselves feel like we are better than what we are. We understand that we are nothing in ourselves, but with Christ, all things have be, been made possible and we have been brought into a family um, where all things are possible. And so tonight we are going to 1 John, the fourth chapter. Um, we're going to read verses 13 through 21. Again, that's 1 John, the fourth chapter, verses 13 through 21. And so the scripture says, by this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God abides in him and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. And so um, we are, we're in it. We're in the word tonight. Um, I pray that you are following along um, because we want to really break down um, this truth today. The truth that we are breaking down is that we are secure in his spirit, that we are secure in in his spirit, not our own, not our own will, not our own desires, not our intellect, not our talents, not our gifts. We are secure in his spirit. And so um, we're going to jump straight in. I want to read verse 13 to you one more again. Um, it says, by this, we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And so um, we've been talking a few weeks um, about this idea of 
um, what real love is. And if you go back into um, the verses that come before this, John is really talking about the nature and the definition of love. And he highlights that anyone who does not love does not know God. Um, and we talked about this last week, but I want to just highlight this one more time that in the list of things that we have made Christianity about and the list of things that we believe define who we are as Christians, the thing that is paramount, the thing that should be at the top of that list is love. Um, without love, it doesn't matter if you have gifts and talents and all that, and we'll get into that in a second. None of that matters if you do not have love. And so John's use of the words by this indicates that, that the love he is speaking of is the fruit of of the relationship that we have with him, right? It's a byproduct of walking with him. It's a byproduct of actually having received this great salvation. If you have received salvation, then you also now um, will carry out what he possesses, which is love, right? And we'll get further down into the scripture where the verse actually says that God actually is love, right? And so you cannot um, um, do this and not be like him, right? And to be like him is to be um, and to display love, right? And so we don't just abide in him. He abides in us, right? It is, it is bi-directional. We abide in him and he abides in us, right? And um, because of this um, uh, truth, we understand that it's from this space um, that love oozes out of us. And the only way that love oozes out of us is because it has been put into us, right? What's in you eventually will come out of you. And so when we are struggling to display love, mm -hmm. uh, it could be, it could be yeah. um, that there's a lack of it in you, right? Mm -hmm. What is in you is eventually going yeah. to come out of you. And so um, John gives us um, one of the many reasons that we have the Holy Spirit, the primary reason, which is to love, right? That is what John is letting us know. And I want to read um, 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 3. It says this. It said, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. And one of the things that I think is super interesting about this is that wrapped up in all of these descriptive terms um, and abilities really is what we would consider to be um, the gifts of the spirit, right? Mm -hmm. That the gifts of the spirit are, are wrapped all in this, that I have the ability to prophesy, that I have the ability to speak in tongues, which we have put great emphasis on these things. But Paul says, if I have the gifts, but don't have the fruit, which is love, it doesn't make a difference. I am nothing. And so it is really interesting to me that we have um, wrapped this entire Christian experience around gifts and we have forgotten that what was most important to him was not our gifting. What was important to him was our fruit. It's always been about the fruit. It's always been about what is produced as a result of your life with God, not just what he freely gives you. And so um, I think that we need to start to magnify the fruit above the gifts, magnify yeah. the fruit above the gifts. Yeah, I think what's really interesting um, in the last part of verse uh, verse three, when well, the last few words is he says, you can have all this. But then he says, I gain nothing. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think we have, you know, oftentimes we can have a selfish view of church and what that is. And I'm, I'm not getting this and I'm not getting that. But have you loved? Yeah. Right. Because if you love your gain. Right. Mm -hmm. Like if mm -hmm. you if you prophesy from a space of love if you interpret from if you do all these things from a space of love you don't have to worry about gaining anything from people mm -hmm. because the reward is in love it will return like it has no choice but to return back to you um and so i think that in all of our getting right in all of this desire to what do i benefit how, how is this going to benefit me what do i get from this you gain when you do it in love you gain when you do it from the right spirit um and i think we need to learn 
how and that's one of the things that I learned from Pastor Naomi. Shout out to her. Um, in her being here, one of the things that she said before was right. Like sometimes the reason why people can't gain from us is they can feel that we're not coming from love, mm -hmm. right? And so you can be praying the Holy Ghost down, <laughs> but if people don't sense that it's coming from a place of love, it's not right. Yeah. Like people, a lot of people can't gain from that, and so doing things from a space of love is really helps. Really, what helps people gain, but us gain as well. Yeah, that's really good before anybody else, because I just want to say that um, I, I, I think that we've all probably witnessed that mm -hmm. before, right? Because you can operate in these gifts, right? Yeah. You can operate in these talents, and no one is denying yeah. that that is true. You mm -hmm. are doing it. But there is um, almost, it is to no, no effect, yeah. right? Because I can't even receive what you're offering because yes. I didn't feel you first, mm -hmm. right? I didn't feel the love come from you first. Yeah. So I think that's really important. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I would just say I was definitely thinking what you mentioned as far as our our gifts are presented differently when, when they're coming from a space of love um, and we experience them differently when we give them from that space of love but something that I was also thinking about is there is already like this obsession with the concept of love just like there is an obsession with the concept of gifts i think it's interesting though because i think the within christianity we can actually be obsessed with the gifts when the world mm -hmm. is obsessed with love mm -hmm. um and i think the two collide however it does come down to the question i have is love of what because I think we get confused even with love and lust and all of these things. And we can really believe that we are doing things from a space of love. And you could be, but it could be from a space of loving your gift, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. the person, mm -hmm. or loving um, your image, not God, you know? Um, and I, I think that there is this desire for understanding love, being able to receive love and even live out love. But um, we don't always reflect on the source, even like, um, and I, th I think within the context of Christianity, we even see these blurred lines where there's this, what the gifts is really coming down to is a, almost like a love of religion rather than mm -hmm. a love of for God and for his people. Mm -hmm. So we can, blind ourselves or deceive ourselves and really think that we're coming from a space of love. And this is why it's so important for us to study the word and to actually be with one another because it's within yeah. um, his word and within that community where you can take those blinders off and realize that, oh, wow, I was actually coming from a space of religion this entire or pride or whatever it is mm -hmm. this entire time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to like underline that whole primary indicator of what the gifting is because man we can really miss it like I just see love as being the fuel to the gift mm -hmm. like it won't even mm -hmm. work because mm -hmm. yeah. incorrectly mm -hmm. working is not working right yeah. like yeah. yeah and it's just so deceiving to have God because, you know, he reigns on the just and that's just does what he wants to do. You can fully be operating and you end up on the wrong side of that scripture that says, you know, I prophesied and mm, cast mm, out yeah. demons. Yeah. And then he's like, yeah, that was cool, but I don't know you. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that all that scripture and that scripture about like the works that are like, hey, like the, the things that are get tossed in the fire, that mm -hmm. always scares me. Yeah. me too. I'm like, Lord, yeah. please keep me mm -hmm. in your will. Like if you don't want me to say something, you want me to do whatever it is. Like I don't want to get puffed up in myself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because God will yeah. employ somebody he doesn't know. Yeah. Right. Like, and so it's like to oh for me, it's like, um, you know, if we if we think about like Disney World, right, like it's this big corp huge corporation. Right. Like not everybody knows the CEO of mm -hmm. Disney. You might work for the company, but you don't know yeah. the CEO. And our job is to be known yeah. by the CEO, mm -hmm. right? Not to just work for him. And so, um, yeah, I think that I, I'm, I'm totally with yeah. you on this, right? So um, verses 14 through 15 says, and we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the son of God God abides in him and he in God. I want to read 15 again. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the son of God, God abides in him and he in 
God, right? And so um, in this, we really begin to see, right? The scripture talks about um, the fact that um, we have seen and we testify, right? This is the real testimony service, right? Um, that we begin to testify um, about that, that the Father, the Father God has sent Jesus into the world um, to be the Savior of the world. And because of um, his relationship with Jesus, John writes as, as someone who was actually seen, right? John is an eyewitness to the ministry of Jesus and he testifies of the truth of of the gospel and so we have not seen Jesus physically but those who know him testify about who he is I want to say that again that those who know him testify about who he is right that um, we are we are not going to say that we know him but never speak of him right we're never we're not going to say um, that we know him but we hold him as some secret right but those who actually know him and have experienced him are going to testify of him right yeah. and um, in the Greek translation of this word testify it actually means to bear witness right is to bear witness to and so um in acts 1 and 8 uh it says but you will receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you watch this part this is always my favorite part and you will be witnesses in jerusalem and in all judea and samaria and to the end of the earth we often talk about the holy spirit and it's usually about our feelings it's about our emotions it's about what we are able to physically do yeah. we're casting out devils and all that and that's cool that's good but actually Acts 1 and 8 said that after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, the power that he actually gives us is the power to be witnesses and to be witnesses in places that you are unfamiliar with, right? And so we have this way of witnessing maybe to the people that we are familiar with, to the people that we know will receive us. But that is not really, uh, it doesn't exemplify the fullness of the power of the Holy Spirit. The fullness of the pow power of the Holy Spirit is exemplified when you are able to have the power to go against what is norm, what, yeah. what is what you are comfortable with, to go outside of your cultural perspective and to speak in another language to other people so that they might be drawn to Jesus Christ. That is the job um, that he has given us is to be witnesses in this earth. And he's given us the power to witness through the power of yeah. his Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think the the biggest issue with this <laughs> is that people don't want to be witnesses. <laughs> well. Right. Like people are signing up for for titles that aren't mentioned in the scripture, right? Mm -hmm. so to be preachers and to be, and, and all those things come and can be a part of your witness. Um, but if the primary method of reaching other people, like you said, that you're not familiar with, won't be you singing. You yeah, can't, right, right, right? It right. won't be you prophesying, right? Make, right? Like not, at least not in the beginning. Maybe eventually you'll get there, <laughs> right? Um, and so I think we, we want to be empowered to be everything other than a witness. Yeah. Right? And, and we, we got to get back to the basics, man. Of And even today I, I was in a situation um, where somebody was speaking to me about something. I'm like... I, like this is what this is about yeah. right like w in a totally unfamiliar place like it's not the time to be preaching the gospel right and of course you ain't gonna be holding your ear and trying to get tuned up but in the right place in the right time holy spirit will give you the words <laughs> to be a witness yeah he will and if you're trying to be anything other than a witness you will often find yourself being disappointed right mm -hmm. um and so i think in it is it's a wonderful thing to want to be used by god but we have to remember the ways that he wants to use us yeah and he wants to use us as witnesses to what he has done and to who he is and who he can be to other people. Yeah, I think um, as you were talking, one of the things that came to me is I think that we want to be reporters but not witnesses mm. right there is a difference between the two right someone That's who is good. on the news or news reporter is just telling what has been told to him and i was actually watching this earlier today um where they were saying there were several news reports about uh president biden and kamala harris that were actually completely made up they mm. were completely fabricated there wasn't one piece of information that was actually accurate yet it was told um, on the newscast, right? And I think that we are ingesting a lot of information mm. um, that we have not necessarily been a eyewitness to. And as a result, so we are reporting information that actually might not be correct. The job is to be an eyewitness yeah. to what he has done for us so that we can actually report the information correctly. Yeah, that's yeah. really good. Can I just say something really quick? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think we miss 
how much that impacts the church, yes. like the local church. Yes. Um, because we're not just doing it to God, we're doing it to his people. And it is, you know, tarnishing the rep the reputation of everything involved. And so I think even in those situations, right, where we, we are dealing with reporters and not witnesses, you go be a witness. Yes. Like you go actually see yes. if this is what's happening, right? Well, verify. Man, verify. Let me try this <laughs> for myself, right? And I think a lot of people would, we could experience God in a new way if we actually would be a witness after we got a report. Yeah. Right? Like, this is what I heard, yeah. but let me actually go feel this for myself. Yeah. Let me actually go check this out for myself um yeah and i'm gonna stop there. yeah <laughs> so right before this started i actually told pastor morris that he has these moments when he says <laughs> what i'm going to say yes um this this is one of those moments so i just <laughs> wanted to throw that psa out there but i will add that um I was thinking about how even the Lord is a witness to himself. Like there's mm -hmm. scripture that mm -hmm. talks about mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and how we just even see throughout scripture, we could argue that he, he is a witness for us. His spirit can bear witness for us. Right. Um, so if he is willing to do that, how much more should we be willing to yeah. be witnesses? Um, but then I was like, if I was in a courtroom, whose role would I actually want? Mm. Like, mm. would I want to be a juror? Would I want to be the judge? Mm. Would I want to be the witness? Would I want, just want to be in the seats in the back watching everything happen? And I honestly would hate to be the witness. Yeah. Because to be on the stand yep. comes Very with true. a lot of questions and people mm -hmm. are questioning your credibility. <laughs> That's so good. And... I think that we we can see things, we can know what we saw, and we are almost afraid that the world will gaslight us. Like mm -hmm. we start gaslighting ourselves about our experience with the Lord mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. than just releasing what we know to be true. Um, we, we start to downplay his goodness so that we don't have to necessarily um, <laughs> be the target yeah um but i wow. think the thing with a with being a witness is your job is to shift everyone's focus from you being the target to him being the target mm -hmm. and even if they never get that you still were an effective witness and i so i don't good. think that we've reached that place of courage not all of us but i i can even i can say for myself i can i can work on how courage shows up in my life and courage with love um shows up in my life where i love him and i love you so much that i'm willing to start mm -hmm. off being the target mm -hmm. and even if you question my credibility I still know what I saw. I still know what I experienced. And you, no one else, this is the thing. What happens like when you're on the stand, and I'm, I'm done after this, but what happens when you're on the stand is that they'll start to ask you questions to almost make, flip mm -hmm. what your experience and tell you what your experience was. And I think we even experience this um, when we're trying to testify of who he is, that people can start to flip and try and tell you what your experience yeah. is. But no one can tell you what your experience yeah. is, you know? Like, I've someone, um, <laughs> they, were, they were attempting to tap me, right? But they're heavy-handed. Mm -hmm. So when they tapped me, it felt, it hurt a lot more than they thought that mm -hmm, it did, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So when that happened, I was like, ow. And they were like, that didn't hurt you. And I'm like, hold up. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. You didn't actually, you, you weren't on the receipt. You didn't yeah. experience it. Yeah. You yeah. don't know what that level of pain was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then in the same token, you don't know what that level of love was. Oh, but you can so experience good. Yeah. it. Like maybe you just, you need your own tap so that you can have your own experience yeah. and be, be a witness to someone else. Yeah. I, one of the things, as you were saying that, I, I think one of the things that we miss, I think this is what's, Missing from this aspect of, of of witnessing is 
is the trust and the mm -hmm. faith that's needed to believe and, and recognize that we're in a witness protection program that's greater mm. than any protection program that's mm. ever been created, right? Yeah. That I trust God that as I release this witness that you are my protection. We quote things like, you know, Psalm 91 and we cover ourselves under Psalm 91 for superficial things, right? For our body and I'm calling our body superficial, mm -hmm. but we do <laughs> not, we do not um, apply that same thing to our <laughs> A witness that God, if I go into this workplace and I declare your truth in this workplace, I pro I believe that Psalm 91 protects me even there. Yes. That it's not about my body in this instance, but you are protecting my soul, that you are protecting my spirit and that you're pleased with me even when they're displeased. And I think that sometimes is also the, the struggle is who do I want to please in the moment? Yeah. Am I going to please you or am I going to please them? Because um, if I do one, I can only do one at a time. That's yeah. right. And that's the issue. I can yeah. only do one at a time. I can't please you and him. And so yeah. you've got to make a decision. And I think that's where our problem lies. Yeah. 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 This is just so on target. That's why I had to grab my pillow because y'all are saying stuff. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, my God. So the whole, like, not bearing witness, um, it just ties so well into the insecure thing because when you are insecure, you're less likely to bear witness of Christ. Mm -hmm. And for me, you know, when you first get saved, you, well, I wanted, I was like screaming from the mouth, like, I'm saved. Oh, yeah, you're zealous. You know? Yeah. And then, you know, life happens. But the mm -hmm. more I build myself in the word, the more I feel more secure to tell people about Christ because so of good. the love that I have in me. I want someone else to experience this, mm -hmm. whether they're rich. No, uh, whether they're poor, no matter their social status, because it's like we get so blinded by the appearance of people and we mm -hmm. think they're OK. But mm -hmm. when I know you don't have Jesus, it's like, man, I really want you to know who he mm -hmm. is. Because yes. mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you're yeah. not OK. Yeah. 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 yeah good stuff. Um, um, I want to read 15 again because I want to just bring us back into context. Mm -hmm. Whoever mm -hmm. confesses that Jesus is the son of God, God abides in him and he in God. Right. And so um, these are our confessions. Right. So um, so, it, so, so so in confessions. Right. Um, knowing and understanding. Um, play key roles in our relationship with God. But John takes things further by bringing in our confession. Your confession matters, right? And the idea behind the word confess is to be in agreement with, right? It's not just to say it. It is to be in agreement with. And so we must agree with God about who Jesus is. We must agree with God about who Jesus is. We don't just confess with our speech, but we confess with our lives. And so um, there's a lot of us that we are we are saying something with our mouth that is not aligning with our lives. That is not a full confession, right? In confession, your speech and your mouth are in alignment with each other, right? And so confession is a declaration of what you have done, right? Or what has been experienced, right? That is a, a confession, right? But profession is a declaration of what you believe. Right. Confession is a declaration of what uh, you have done or what you have experienced. But profession is a declaration of what you believe. And so the question that I have for you all is, has there ever been a time when your confession didn't match your profession? Has there ever been a time that your confession didn't match your profession? And did that lead to any feelings of insecurity for you? This laugh over here. I'm laughing like I know this question was coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think they read those answers. Yes. Um, yeah. So I, I wouldn't say that I grew up in church, right? But I've spent a, the majority of my life now um, in church, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I think the. The beginning, like what Marissa said, like the beginning of my relationship with Christ, I was sold out. Like, oh my gosh, everybody needs to know I'm saved. You should get saved. Your mom needs to get saved. Like everybody needs to get saved, right? <laughs> um, and then I got a little bit older um, and I got into church, mm. right? Mm. Like I coasted into church. I was like, oh, this is cool. I got this. I got this. I got this church thing down, right? Um, <laughs> and so I like there were there was a, a very large portion of my life where I was in, I was involved with a lot of different things. Like I was um, like really struggling with alcoholism. 
um, I was sure and I was in church like mm-hmm. I was struggling with like well, I want to go to the club like I want to do I wanted mm-hmm. to do all of these things um, and I always had worldly friends because I feel like they was my in right um, and they loved me they really did probably because I was too familiar with them that's why they loved me so much <laughs> but um, but they but it was always this line right like they would go places and they wouldn't invite me and i'd be like why y'all not inviting me to the club i want to go to the club right um and there had got like there came a time where it was like okay right like either you gonna do this Mm -hmm. or you're not Mm -hmm. right because Mm -hmm. those same friends didn't have respect for me yeah because i couldn't try to witness them like yo come to my church and they're like but why well, I was with you all weekend, yeah. right? Like, there had to come They a love point. you, but they don't respect They you. love me, but don't respect oh, me, right? Yeah. Because, and I didn't respect me either. Like, yeah. who was really, and neither did God. Like, who was really respecting me in this situation? Nobody. Um, <laughs> but the love of God, honestly, is what drew me to the place of not even, not not caring, but even getting past the point that they didn't respect me. Mm-hmm. I had to remember what he thought about yeah, me. Yeah, right. Um, and, not, and even above what I thought about myself, right? Um, and so there had to be a point where um, I would make a decision. And I'm so glad that I did make that decision. But I often think about those years of when confession didn't match profession, but how much the love of God was still present mm-hmm. and how much he still loved me and Ain't how much right. he still spoke <laughs> over me and, and saw these days before I could even think of these days. Yeah. Um, um, and he didn't he didn't discount me because those didn't match. Yeah. Right. Like he didn't say Ugh, off with your head. Right. Even though even though he could have, um, he still loved me. He still drew me back into the family of God. So. Yeah. Good stuff. That's my story. Um, kind of what I was mentioning before. Um, and thank you for that because um, you're just dope and your transparency is valued and it challenges us and I'm sitting here and I'm challenged but going back to what I was saying before actually about even like the gaslighting I think I actually my experiences with my confession not matching my profession is when someone was trying to tell me what to confess Mm. they gave me the words um they gave me the words and when I even tried to confess something that actually matched my profession that was shut down um, and attacked Mm -hmm. and how that influenced me um, confessing moving forward Um, it it not it 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 taught me how to take on everybody else's language except Mm -hmm. for God's. Um, Mm -hmm. And how I was even able to master that um, and be proud of the fact that I can listen to you and take on your voice. Mm -hmm. Um, And when you reach a point where what you're a master at is an empty void, you find that there's so much more to life, there's so much Mm -hmm. more to him than what you master. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And when I kind of finally reached that fork in the road, um, and I realized that I could actually forfeit what I mastered so I can actually serve the master, Mm -hmm. um, it helped me realign even matching my confession with my Mm -hmm. profession it's really good that was really good um i have a similar story to elder janae but i don't want to be redundant so i want to cannot speak on like another experience you just talk on whatever you want to talk about (laughs) so this was like me um I would say Junior Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Junior <laughs> Jesus. I, I like that. Right? <laughs> and um, so anyway, I was, I was on a college campus and I was visiting a friend and his roommate, um, he said he was, what did he say? He holds some office in the church, mm-hmm. but his lifestyle. So it, it was irritating me 
And I was like, okay, Lord, I don't want to just come, you know, say something crazy or, you know, talk in my flesh. Mm -hmm. But it was this one day where God was like, now I need you to say something. Mm -hmm. So I did. I was like, hey, do you think, you know, because he he was talking about the kids uh, that was under him. And I was just like, but the kids, though. So it's like your decision is your decision. But don't mess, you know. Mm -hmm. Don't mess with the (laughs) children. So, um. Yeah, I was like, yeah, do you think that's good for the kids to, to be around? And he was like, well, the men that taught me did the same thing. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, well, that's not what the word says. Mm-hmm. And he was like, Hi, uh, well, what the word said, like with attitude. And I said, Lord. Oh, and then um, <laughs> I said, well, the word says da 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 And then he was like, in the moment, he was like being uh, debative and combative. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, oh, you must know the whole, because he kept going from, well, what did this say? What about this? And God was giving me, and this was some stuff I didn't even like fully read. It was like mm-hmm. literally the mm-hmm. Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you must read the whole word. I said, I actually have it. This is the Holy Ghost. This is what mm-hmm. you need. This is what you need. Get what you need. Get what you need. Get what you need tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for this. I'm sorry. And so, uh, long story short, that happened. He had an attitude. And I was like, well, I love you, brother. I hope, you know, this is well with you. Maybe like a few <laughs> This story is killing me. <laughs> oh, this story is killing me. I hope it's well with you. It's well with me. So I seen him later on campus, and he yelled my name. And I hate when people do that, by the way. But... <laughs> I was like, hey, and then I walked over. He was like, you know what? You know, God was dealing with me on everything you said, mm. and I'm going to start mm. making some changes. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, well, praise God. So in the moment, he didn't receive it. And sometimes people just won't receive it, period, because I'm in yeah. scripture. But just don't let, like, don't be afraid of their faces. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. That that actually is um, taking me back to our section that we were talking about regarding witnessing, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's the issue. Mm-hmm. The issue is that we can't, we want to see the fruit of what we have done in the moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to say this and I want you to receive it now. Yeah. And you don't know what's going to happen later on, you mm-hmm. know, and in your instance, you had the opportunity to actually see it. But how many seeds have been planted that you will never see, never see. that a tree actually grew from that yeah. seed that you planted? And so our job is not to really sit around and wait for something to happen, but it's really mm-hmm. just to trust God that somebody else is going to water and God's going to, um, you know, yeah. give the increase. So, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. But that's, continues to make it about us us one right mm-hmm. so like is it the holy ghost mm-hmm. is it right. just you trying to like control somebody or put your little star for the day yeah 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 something? another notch under our belt yeah. yeah yeah so verse um 16 says so we have come to know and to believe that uh, to believe the love that god has for us so we have come to know and to believe the love that god has for us god is love and whoever abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. Right. And so it's all it is his love for us. Right. And so um, I, what I love about this is how it breaks it into two sections. Right. It says um, we have come to know. And we have come to believe, Mm -hmm. right? Both are necessary. We have come to know and we have come to believe the love that God has for us. We go from knowing and understanding to knowing and believing in God's love for us. And um, unfortunately, many people don't make that conversion, right? Like it's one thing to know something theoretically. It's another thing to actually put that into practice, to actually experience the fullness of this. And so um, our goal is not just to have head knowledge, right? Mm-hmm. Our goal is not to amass a bunch of scriptures, but the goal really is to understand what you are speaking over me. This is why I said, um, even when we um, started this class today, that after seven weeks, the goal, the desire is not just that you would have a bunch of information that you can regurgitate, that you can report to somebody else. But the goal is, hey, did this get in me that I now know and believe what has been spoken over my life by God through his word, right? And so um, we experience the security of God when we move from the information of God's love to the revelation of his love. That information cannot be enough. Um, um, Scripture talks about the fact that that even demons, right, know the word of God, right? They know who Jesus is. They Demons have confessed who Jesus is, right? So it's not just the the, um, acknowledgement of who he is. Is, but it's actually now understanding what you have been brought into as a child of God and that you actually believe that you are what he has said, right? Scripture says this in Romans, the eighth chapter, 
It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. But no, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure, I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here's the thing. In order to say this, in order to make this bold confession that all of these things that were listed, none of these things can separate me from the love of God. That is not because you believe in yourself. That is because I believe in his word. I know, I know and I understand. I now believe the fullness of what he has spoken in his word. And as a result of that, I know that I can stand on this truth because yeah. I believe what he said. I have now, I have now gone from information. I have now gone from knowledge to the revelation of the truth of how great his love is. I have seen the depths of his love yeah. and I recognize now that his love is too deep for me to be picked up from it and so this is the place that god wants you to be where you understand the fullness understand the fullness of what he has said and then believe it and trust it no matter what it is that you see so um my what i'm working on right now for my job there's like this huge obsession with help the kids with self-love and self-affirmation. <laughs> um, I don't know why I gave my coworkers that voice. <laughs> That's their voice tonight. Um, but what I was explaining to them earlier today and earlier this week is that self-affirmations by themselves mm. are not enough. Say it. Because mm -hmm. I can literally get up in the morning for a year straight look in the mirror and say i am enough i am loved i am beautiful and not believe it yeah. after that year is over that's right because i had that information but i didn't have the revelation about who i actually am and it wasn't rooted in anything that was stable it was yeah. rooted <laughs> in a desire a yearning a desperation a frustration an anxiety to believe all of those things. But my heart was extremely detached from those things that I was releasing. And that is just, I the same thing applies with what we are talking about tonight when it comes to Christ, where you can have the information that he died on the cross for your sins because he loves you. And you can say that to people. You can even try to evangelize about to, with, to other people about the work of the Lord based off of a pamphlet. But if you have the pamphlet and you do not have the revelation, Lord. you hit this wall, you yeah. hit this wall and you're also um, setting yourself up to run out of steam. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is that revelation sets you up for endurance that information mm. cannot. Mm -hmm. And this is why That's they good. work together so beautifully because revelation is empty without information. Yeah. But the combination of the two set you up to literally make sense. You mm -hmm. make sense. And it's the fact that you're not confused anymore. Because, it's yeah. because what happens is information without revelation is actually set up. It's, it's a setup to confuse yourself. Like this yeah. is the information. This is what I was told, but I don't believe it. So is it actually true? And you end up having these conversations, this internal battle. But when you have information matched with revelation, it breaks the spirit of confusion, which mm -hmm. is what helps sustain you. Good. And keep you moving because you are confident. There's a sense of security that is there because you actually believe what you've been told. That's so good. That is My so Lord. good. Yeah, I wanted to say, and I see y'all thinking over there, but but I want I want to say this. I I I think that self affirmation thing is really tricky. Um, I. I want to, I'm trying like not to snap, but I feel a snap coming, but, I but, I, but I don't want to, so I'm going to pull it back no, a little wait, bit. No. I, I, I think that self, <laughs> self affirmation, um, that does not accompany revelation, 
um, is useless, right? It because our our self affirmation can only be true if it's founded in the truth of Him, right? Because on our own we are nothing. That's the truth, right? The truth is no matter how many times you look in that mirror and say you are enough, the truth is you're not. And you feel it. And I want us to really. Mm -hmm. oh, come on, calm down. Right. I want us to, I want us to really get that because I think that we have adopted worldly principles that make yeah. us speak something that is untrue. You are not enough. Let me let me let that marinate for real yeah. real quick. You are not, neither am I, but he is. He is. And he is in me, and that makes me enough. If yeah. you miss that in piece, Jesus. you will now um, have a self-inflated um, perspective about who you are that when the storms of life come huh. will knock you down real quick. And I'm, I'm, no matter how many times you look back in that mirror and tell yourself all of these things, you will be stuck with the reality that I really am not enough, that I really mm -hmm. do not have it within myself. But when my security doesn't come from me, and when I, my security actually comes from the fact that he is the one who affirms me, yeah. because greater is he that's in me yeah. than he that is in the world, then I have something sub uh, substantive to stand on, and it's not me affirming myself, it's him affirming me. Yeah, that's really good. I have much to say, but I'll try to condense. Um, my thoughts on self-affirmations without the truth of the word is that they're spells. Mm. Because... I was, you going where I was going to go. Because what you are trying to make yourself or somebody else believe in the, in the strength of these words. That's just what they are. They are words, right? Like you said, without the truth and the presence and the power and the knowledge and the submission of Jesus Christ, they are just words. That is a spell. You're speaking a spell. You're casting a spell. Um, the other thing that I want to say is that um, we, the only reason why things like this rock people, particularly Christians, um, is because we are, we are taking self out of it, right? And it, it is because you actually did want to rely on yourself. Mm. Like you actually were trying to build yourself instead of build your spirit. Yeah. We're not building oh, self. So good. We're building the spirit man. Like you said, the, what did you call the super, right? Like this body is, is wasting away every day, it, yeah. right? We are not going to heaven with these bodies, right? We are going, we've taken what's on the inside, the, the spirit, we're taking that with us. And so anything that builds this body is good for a certain time, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's not for eternity. Right. Um, and we've spent a lot of time journaling and putting sticky notes up. And like you said, telling ourselves we're this and we're that, but we should be building the spirit man. And we're not, and of course, you don't want to be just, you know, talking about yourself any kind of way right but you more effort and energy should be spent in building our spirits and building what will last because we when like you said when when the cares of this life come um it's not about how how strong you've built yourself up to be it's about what you've been grounded in um so we've really got to shift our focus and just this idea of the information and the revelation thing um this reminds me of like being in college and like pulling all-nighters like trying to cram yourself with information i never did that because i'm like if i don't got it i don't got it i'm not about to sit here and not sleep i might as well be rested if i'm not gonna pass this set anyway i might as well do it rested um and so i think instead of trying to just cram ourselves with knowledge right about god and and spend enough time where we meditate but we allow space for revelation mm -hmm. we'll see our lives change right and i don't want people to think that we're talking about revelation in terms of like revelation so that you can preach right a revelation of the mm -hmm. scriptures mm -hmm. but there's revelation that comes with your life mm -hmm. Like there's revelation where you see, wow, this point in my life, I see that you loved me. Yeah, when my yeah. father died, I see that you loved yeah. me. When my friends didn't treat me right, I see that you loved me. Um, and so it's not revelation that just comes from the book, but it's it. revelation it. from your life. That's right. Um, and if you give him that time in his space, he will reveal to you every single part where he has been God and where he has been enough. Okay, so my brain is a little different. Um, <laughs> <laughs> gonna start there. That's all right. So I thought about strange addictions. I don't know if y'all ever watched that oh, show. Oh, that show. Mm -hmm. So I used to, like, my brother and I would watch this back at home. So I would think, like, yo, I wonder, I wonder what happened. Why are they collecting dolls or doing this? And, and so they face something traumatic. Mm. 
And so when my parents passed away, well, I honestly, when my mom passed away, I had took one of her teddy bears back with me. So, man, Marissa. and when you were saying that scripture, Marissa. yo, when you were saying that scripture and she then with everything, life. Listen, yeah. and you was saying every everything that was spoken, I was like, God really like his love really shone in that whole aspect because there were times where I would be depressed and I would just hope just like I'm holding on to this pillow. Oh, I wish my mom and God was like, I'm mm. here. Yeah. Wow. And it was so many times and even that it was it's like a double whammy right now, because even when Satan was really after that. So even when I physically put the bear down, mm -hmm. it was mentally still there. Yeah. So I'm not holding on to the bear, but I'm still holding on to depression. Mm. Mm. Jesus. Wow. And it wasn't until like the pandemic that the depression was finally gone and that was 2017 it's 2021 and it, mm -hmm. it was still like even anxiety was still like try to come but it's a fight that i'm fighting yeah you know what i'm saying but in the beginning it wasn't even a fight i would just give into it yeah so yeah listen I'm, really trying. Listen. I'm trying but I, but I but i i i, I want to say this i like because and I'm, I'm i'm hesitant just because i i'm trying to be sensitive to yeah. What people are experiencing, mm -hmm. yes. like mm -hmm. a person like you, right? Mm -hmm. Who that's a real thing. That's a, mm -hmm. a coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that what we miss is spiritually some of those things that we are labeling as coping mechanisms mm -hmm. are really destructive to our spirit, man. Yeah. Um, and we are holding on to charms and heirlooms and all types of things, thinking that it's just honoring somebody, mm -hmm. but it's actually holding you hostage to yeah. a a form of life, right? Yeah. It's holding you hostage to a specific space in time that every time that you put it on or every time you grab hold of it, you're taken back. And God is trying mm -hmm. to push us forward. Yeah. Um, and he's trying to push us forward in his power, in his might, in his strength, um, and not with our coping mechanisms. Yeah. And um, I think that it's... Uh, even those little lucky things, like, oh, this happens, so I'm going to keep this forever. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, they're, 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 it's, yeah. it's all problematic. And, yeah. and I th it, really, the truth is, what, what God really teaches us is that anything outside of him is problematic. Yeah. And, oh, God, help me, <laughs> Jesus. The, I, I want us to really just, I don't even want to go through a list of just the things that we do, but I do want us to really think about what do our actions say about our beliefs? That's really, mm -hmm. I, really what I want us to do, right? Like, do our actions say, I believe in you, period. Yes. Um, because I think that we are using a lot of things to anesthetize ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're using a lot of things to get God off the hook for being responsible for your life. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, that we... Uh, oh, whoa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think that we're... Yeah. I think that we're putting a lot of things in place of God... And we're saying that they're temporary holders until God does what he said that he's going to do. Mm -hmm. But God doesn't need a, a placeholder. Like, God doesn't need a bookmark. Yeah. Um, he's the author and the finisher of, of, of our faith. And yeah. every single page he is writing. He doesn't need you to put a placeholder in yesterday. Because I'm already at tomorrow. And so That's we trust point. him for our tomorrow. And anything, God help me today. Anything that you are utilizing... Um, that is in the place of him mm -hmm. is a graven image. It is a God. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it is. Yeah. Y'all not going to save me. It's, it's a, it's a God. I feel like I'm on the edge here, like completely snapped. Go ahead. No, I was, I've <laughs> actually been, um, so yesterday, Ryan and I was watching some really old show, sci-fi <laughs> show where, um, this man had just lost his loved one, so he actually went back in time to stop her death, right? Mm -hmm. And years went by and she finally finds out, like, you did this and you didn't tell me, and now time is actually catching up to us and everything else around us is malfunctioning. Mm -hmm. And you now have to make a decision on if you are willing for self-destruction to take place and everything else around you to destroy um be destroyed for the sake of this one 
person or this one thing mm -hmm. or if you're willing to let go of that one thing so everything else could be made whole and when mm -hmm. I was talking to someone recently a few weeks ago I was talking to someone and the Lord's been really been dealing with me with, with this spirit of grief so I, I am mm -hmm. I am just gonna like take this space because I feel like this is mm -hmm. so intentional mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but though I was like what scriptures actually combat the spirit of grief and it actually is this scripture on mm. nothing can separate yeah. me from your oh, love wow. yeah. because wow. what happens is and let me clarify this is not just losing like a loved one passing mm -hmm. away this is like divorce this is losing mm -hmm. a job like there's so many ways that this shows up and what happens is when you um lose someone or something it almost feels like you're losing a part of yourself like you were literally like stripped away from a part of yourself right so there's this desperation Jesus. to pick up the pieces and fill in that gap and that's how we get to spaces like what marissa was talking <laughs> about mm -hmm. but build your confidence in his love being greater than your fear of separation. That's it. That's and so bad. that Jesus. is what will mend and help you yeah. walk in, even though you, the, the, the truth is that they are gone, that mm -hmm. that is done. Mm -hmm. But your response to that truth is different where like you find yourself truly leaning on him like never before where your response to separation is different because you know that I can be separated from all of these things mm -hmm. and yet your love is still there. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. your love fills is literally, it fills <laughs> in the gap. Yeah. And we talk about how the void is still there, but the, oh. like, oh, thank you. <sighs> I, God is greater than the void that has been there for nine years. He's yeah. Yeah, yes. his, his love is greater than that. And that's not to say that the role of the person or that thing wasn't necessary. Right, right, it right, could have right. been extremely beneficial. But please, please trust him enough. Trust mm -hmm. him enough with who he is, which is love. Yeah. That he will take care of that enough and take care of you enough to keep on walking where no matter what you're separated from there's there's a rest that you find mm -hmm. because you know that he's not just near yeah. he is in you yeah. filling the gaps yeah can yeah. i just say one more yeah, thing yeah of course you can um because i want to speak to the other side of that right like i i feel like so um before i got married somebody said to me oh um i i really think you're going to you're you're going to miss your dad because he's not there on your on your special day mm -hmm. and they were believing that they didn't mean any harm behind it mm -hmm. but like they were professing something over me that wow. wasn't true wow right. and for i thought something was wrong with me i was like wait i am i'm supposed to be sad but i was like wait no i don't have to be mm -hmm. sad That's right, right. I don't because have to be. god has given me mm -hmm. a father he's mm -hmm. given me a community where I may not have this person, this physical person, but he has filled that void, not just with himself, but with people, mm -hmm. with yes. community. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And so I think too, when we hold on to these ideas and everything else, we're missing what we could find in people, right? Yeah. And it's not a replacement, it's not a replacement. but God is so good yeah. that he'll say, listen, let me actually not let you feel what you think you feel, right? Yeah. Like, let me, I love you so much yeah. that I won't let you feel the void the way that you really would have because I put people in your life. I put you in a place and I put other people in that space to be able to give to you in that way. Mm -hmm. That's the love of God, that God will position yes. you in such a way God. that he'll give you people. Yeah. Right. And so I, I think that once wow. we let down those idols and everything else that we have, we give space for God to give to us whatever else that we need. Yeah. And sometimes we're experiencing what we expect. Yeah. Right? Like, and so we have put it in our minds that yes. this is the way that I'm supposed yeah. to feel. Mm -hmm. um, and so now every like I, I am now feeling it yes. because that's what I think yes. I should be um, experiencing. And I mm -hmm. want to just say this because I think I think this is important. And we we talked um, when we first set out to do this class, we talked about, you know, our, uh, us needing to be vulnerable yeah. and transparent. And I, I just want to say, uh, you know, we're not speaking from a perspective of people who haven't lost yeah. right because i think i almost like feel like well, you don't know what i've been through yeah. like my entire immediate family is gone mm -hmm. i got three brothers all gone right mm -hmm. mother father 
all gone, right? We've experienced loss. We have grandparents. We've got fathers. We've got mother and father. So we, we're talking from an experience, yeah. right? Yeah. This we are witnessing mm -hmm. of to, of what God is capable of doing. This is not just about what has been read. This mm -hmm. is what is about what has been lived. We're not reporting. We're witnessing of what God really is able to do. Yeah. That He really truly is the gap filler. If you would let him and not put something in his way yeah. because what he can't do is occupy a space that's already occupied. That's cool. And so whatever uh, the things are that we have put in his space temporarily, in order for him to actually fill it, you've got to remove what your temporarily placeholder has been. Yeah. So, yeah. And so we fill it with his love. That is what we yeah. fill it with. Um, scripture said that God is love. And so John states the, the simple yet complex truth that our father god is the definition of love not only is he like that's this is always tricky for me right because he's not just the definition of love he is it yeah. right like any anytime there is love there is god where you can replace the word love with god in fact when i teach marriage counseling those of you who have been there those of you who will be there one day right um just pops out <laughs> over your life right right <laughs> right um when i go through first corinthians the thir uh, 13th chapter one of the things that i do right love is patient love is kind i tell people to go back and read it and replace the word love with god right mm -hmm. because if you look at that you are really getting a description of who he is mm -hmm. i think it's super important Important that we get that this that's yeah. not semantics that's just not good teaching right. I need you to get that truth that every time we think of love it is who he is right it's not an aspect of who he is it's not an attribute of God it's not a characteristic of God it is God and yeah. so I want us to really get that right and so any relationship that is absent of God is not built on the foundation of true love you cannot have love but not have God Mm -hmm. they they are synonymous yeah. I just broke that down for you and so this is why why are you doing this today this is why for those of you who are specifically looking for um, a spouse you're looking to be married we're not just beating you over the head with religious um, jargon when we ask the question is this person saved does this person yeah. love God it is not just about religion or about yeah, church yeah, yeah. it's about the fact that this person cannot love you yeah. if they don't love God yeah. because God is love it is just not humanly possible for them to love you correctly if they do not love God first and so mm -hmm. I just wanted to slip that in real quick right and so love um, uh, uh, desires reconciliation it's a part of of the the portrait of love right Jesus came because of love and his job when he came here was to reconcile the world to reconcile the children of God back to his father right that is what love does love reconciles and so that is the job that he has given us that he has given us the command to be ministers of reconciliation that is what we do as children of God who love God and the last thing that I want to say is that love gives us the ability to abide right we don't abide just in our own strength right mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit of God abides in us which means that his love abides in us which gives us the ability to stay it is the yeah. love of God oh when you've experienced the fullness I am getting really stirred uh, when you experience the fullness mm -hmm. of the love of God it is his spirit it is holy presence that makes you not ever want to depart right yeah. uh, this is this is these are the uh, um, things that remind when when David says oh taste and see mm -hmm. that the Lord is good like once you have really tasted of his goodness I'm telling you like when you have experienced the love of God anybody who's experienced the love of God never has walked away from it yeah if you were able oh God if you are able it. to walk away from his love I want to tell you now that you have never fully experienced it yeah. the moment that you get the fullness of the love of God in your life you will never turn away and you will live the rest of your days trying to figure out how to draw closer to that love yeah yep yeah yeah i think my my favorite part of love that i've learned is that love is not a feeling yeah mm -hmm. like you don't have to feel and god is so good that he literally allows us to feel his love right um but even when i don't feel loved by him i am loved by him and and i i am so glad that i am done chasing the feeling of love mm -hmm. i have exhausted myself 
I've ruined relationships. I've ruined myself chasing the feeling yeah, of yeah, love. Yeah, yeah. But once I realized that his love is a knowing, it's a steadying, it's abiding. Once I got that, I said, oh, I'm done with the other stuff. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. the other stuff didn't profit me none anyway, right? Yeah. But this is a place where, where, where I wanted to be. Um, and I'm not going to talk about this anymore, I promise. But after I got married, um, I <laughs> like, I was like, from your experience. I was like expecting to be like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> ah, like, and I went back to regular life after that. Like, it was like, all right, um, uh, yeah. can you put the garbage, that's like, can, where the pots go? <laughs> like, it was like very like every day. Yeah. And I realized that's love. Yeah. Love is very every love day. Is day, to day. <laughs> love is very like, it's not like God is not about to like throw daisies at my feet and like, you know, he's not about to do all that. Like, he is going to remind me every single day, I'm here for you. I am the one who loves you. I give you my love. And it's not always a feeling, but it's give something it that you. you can always count on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh. Um, I just want to, I think this actually really, actually, it really might be short. Um, <laughs> I, something that used to, and still, I still have moments. I would get frustrated when I was not delivering or executing love in excellence or perfection mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I would get frustrated when a lack of evidence in witnessing <laughs> this, this lack is witnessing okay? um, I, I also I would get disappointed when I didn't necessarily receive it but at the same time I was just like hmm, expected mm -hmm. right and what I love so much about this statement the, about the fact that God is love, what finally clicked for me is I'm constantly learning about God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I'm constantly learning about Come God, on. I'm constantly learning about love. Yeah. So I yeah. don't have yeah. to beat myself up about not executing it. I don't really have good. to mm -hmm. be enraged with somebody else because they didn't get it because that's just a part of him that they're still learning. And at that point, it's actually also a part of him that I'm still learning. Yes. And thank you, God, that you're such an amazing teacher that so you amazing. give us space to learn about you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even when we're not, even though you live within us, we're literally <laughs> learning about what abides in us Ain't so that, that right? we can actually give it out the right way. So stop being so hard on yourself as a student when your teacher is still giving you a pat on the back because you are still willing to learn. And as long as you are still willing to learn about love, which is really just learning about him, he'll always honor that. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking, I, like, I don't, you know, I'm, science wasn't my thing, right? I, I wasn't a science guy. I was, mm -hmm. a, I was an English and mm -hmm. uh, social studies history. I'm, I'm that guy, right? And, that guy. and so there's a lot about the way this body works that I don't know yeah. anything about. All mm -hmm. I know is that it works, right? All I know is it works, right? And so I'm thinking about the fact that like in us, right, there are, you know, blood vessels and capillaries and there are organs and tissues and all the cells and all of the stuff that's in us. And I don't know how it works, but it doesn't stop it from existing. Mm. Wow. Um, and sometimes we're, we're in doubt yes, we about what's yes, inside of us because we don't know mm. how it works. And we haven't yeah. figured out how it all operates. But there are some things that you learn along the way. There is more mm. that I know now about my body than I knew, yes. than I knew 10 years ago, right? Mm. And, and although I'm still not an expert, I know more now than I did before. Mm. And I don't doubt what's in me just because I don't understand how it all works. And That's I believe so that the Holy Spirit is the same way, that just because I don't know everything about him and how it works and all that i can learn some of that stuff along the way yeah. whatever you do just don't doubt the parts that you have inside of you yeah. so good yeah yeah um so with that scripture i felt played because <laughs> <laughs> this girl <laughs> um i was like ooh. so what came to my mind was the time where god had to correct me about how i prayed for um, I don't want to say my enemies because I don't really have enemies right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but just people just I right was. Now. Um, <laughs> 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 right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, just people that I had struggles with loving easier mm -hmm. than others. Mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. So God would say, um, so that prayer isn't right, and you need to check yourself because right now you're actually worse than they are. 
And I was like, oh, so that whole scripture about love and who he is just really highlighted the fact that we can really feel like we're doing something in love mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and God is just shining that flashlight like, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's really that not it. Yeah. That ain't yeah. me. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. he was like, this is what you pray for. Remember, you don't want to be like the prophets of da-da-da-da-da, so you may want to take heed. So, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's the yeah. da-da-da-da for me. But um, <laughs> for, for, for the prophet da-da-da-da-da. Verse 18. <laughs> verse 18. <laughs> <laughs> Verses 18 and 19. <laughs> By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also are we in this world. I really love this verse. I want to say it again. By this is love perfected Mm -hmm. with us so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not been perfected in love. This is so good to me. It's all love it's all love right love being perfected and so um for perfected john um he he doesn't just um use um this greek word um which has the idea of maturity and completeness completeness he actually speaks of love that is perfectly perfected or completely complete right this is the kind of love that john is is speaking about right and so if if his love is completed in us then we are secure we no longer need to look to outside sources to be the source of the, of, of love for us and um one of the things that i really was as i was reading that scripture one of the things that i was um I I really began to just really bless me was this idea about confidence for the day of judgment, right? Mm -hmm. That um, there are so many people who are saved who are still fearing the day of judgment. They are terrified by the day of judgment. And what the scripture is telling us is that if you are saved and receive the love of God, but you are still fearful of the day of judgment, it means that you have not fully received that love, that it has not been perfected yet because a mature love in God recognizes that punishment no longer is our portion, that we don't Mm -hmm. sit and wait in dread yes. of what mm-hmm. of what judgment mm-hmm. day is going to look like. In fact, for those of us who have now really received the love of God, we understand that that is a day of rejoicing, not a day mm-hmm. of dread. Mm-hmm. Judgment yeah. day is a day of rejoicing mm-hmm. for the believer, mm-hmm. not a day of dread. And so if you have been, you know, I know people who skip the whole book of Revelations, like I ain't going to read that because I'm scared. <laughs> It's only scary for those outside, right? But for those of us who are in, this is a blessed hope that we look forward to is what happens at the end of the book of Revelations. And so I want us to really begin to let that be inventory for us, that if you are always um, walking around in guilt, shame, condemnation, Mm -hmm. you haven't fully put on this love that God has for us. And if he abides in you and you abide in him, that love must be perfected. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely was one of those people. <laughs> I literally, I feel like somebody's going to laugh. Well, I know someone's going to laugh because I've told them this before and they laughed at my face when I told them this before. But anyway, um, so I had, when I was younger, I actually had a dream that I got left behind. And it traumatized me <laughs> until God knows when. Um, so I would literally go around and i tell everybody, oh my gosh. When he returns, I'm going to get left behind because I saw it in a dream. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> like, the, the dream had way much more meaning to it, and I still don't fully understand what it was, but it was not that. It was not, and I was, I was already saved, so I was really like, chill, Adrian, and then there was still the other side. Anyway, I, I love this because what I found is that we almost take pride in self-punishment Mm. Um, when he is That's good. living life like is golden and he wants us to do the same thing. Um, and we read books like Revelation, which is actually a beautiful book it if is. you it's read beautiful. if you read it yeah. through yeah. the eye of a believer. Like mm-hmm. and if anything, it drives you to confess. It drives you to be a witness because Say then it. you are like, you know what? I don't want you dealing with those locusts, so let's get this right. You know, like there, there's something, something, something changes in you because you realize that you're on the other side. And 
we take bits and pieces of who he is and what comes with salvation and it's almost like okay i'm saved so i can pray but i'm still not saved enough where he would accept me into heaven when it's all said and done and if these are all of the things if these are all the promises that he has given us then just let that be rather than almost like resisting a really good plan Mm -hmm. um like a really good like take the benefit like when you sign up when you join a job and you check out those benefits and they're good you're not going to ask them like hey can you take some of this back it's too good to be true Mm. you're just going to take those extra days you know and i think we we um have to to take on that that same thing and stop looking at it so much through just the tangible and i think that's where we kind of get caught up in it we get so caught up in the tangible yeah. concept of dying and our mm-hmm. lives ending but if you can switch from the tangible to the fact that you literally are going to get a new body that you are literally going to be with him forever and even though you yeah. can't necessarily touch that at some point you literally would be at his feet like, mm-hmm. why dwell on the fact that this is going to end when mm-hmm. you can honor and celebrate that now? Yeah. 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 Um, it's so funny when you said the thing about, I don't want to read <laughs> Revelation because I'm scared. That was funny. <laughs> um, but the whole Bible is scary. Surprise. Like, in that way, like, it's all throughout Scripture that where exactly. God don't play. Mm-hmm. Like, you see, he ain't, he ain't playing no games. Um, and Pastor Adrian, I used to have dreams about that all the time when I was little. Like, really? I used Whatever, I'll oh tell God. you about it. Yeah, y'all got the y'all need a, anyways, y'all y'all need a meeting. I got yeah. <laughs> up in my dreams. Um, you better get caught up. <laughs> no, I wasn't caught up in mine. That was a problem. <laughs> um, but I I think this this just reminds me um of the fact that we are like like the 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 goal is to look beyond this flesh, right? Mm-hmm. And this this life that we're living here on earth because this is not the end game. Mm. And I think we really Say forget, that. like, God did Remind not, us. Jesus did not save us for this life. Mm-hmm. He saved us for the next life. Yeah, and so if yeah. that is what he saved us for, preservation here is not what we should be trying to do, yeah, right? Yeah, now, yeah. you're not taking yourself out, but, like, it's you're not supposed <laughs> to be. Beat me up, Scotty. Yeah, right? <laughs> but, like, even, like, I hate, I cannot stand flying on a plane, but I'd be, on, I'd be on a plane scared. I'm like, okay, this is it. This is the day. And I really have to say, yo, <laughs> this if this is the day, then this is then the day, is right? Like, besides the fact that there's nothing I can do about it, but, like, I'm really not living my life for this life. Like, there is... My, I'm not even gonna say the goal because the goal has been achieved already. I'm already say going, that. right? Like the the destination is heaven, heaven. and yeah. that is what we are not living for, but dying for yeah. to go to heaven. Um, and so we've got to refocus, man, and really realize that this life is a vapor. It is it is going away, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, but we are going to heaven. If you are a believer, um, yeah. we should not fear, like you said, Judgment Day. We should not punishment. He's already taken our punishment, so that's off the table um but we should be rejoicing in the fact that we have lived this life through his love and now we can go to heaven and be like i saw your love down here now let me thank you for it up here i can really appreciate this space because of what you've done for me that's good we got a journey we got a journey so let's 20 20 through 22 um let's wrap this up it says that we love because he first loved us if anyone says i love god and hates his brother he is a liar for he who does not love his brother we need some time for he who (laughs) does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love god whom he has not seen and this commandment we have from him whoever loves god must also love his brother love god love people love god love people in fact they are not two separate things they are one and the same love god and love people right john lets us know that god's love is the beginning of our love and this means that one we have the ability to love because of god we have the ability to love because of god don't say you don't if you got him you have Mm -hmm. the ability to love Two, we have the capacity to love like God because he, we abide in him and he abides in us. We have the capacity to love like God. And the third thing is that we give love freely because we've received love 
freely. We give love freely because we have received love freely. And then there's this thing, right? He throws this thing in there that I think we need to, I'm going to slow down a little bit because mm -hmm. I think we need to deal with this, right? He deals with this concept of brotherly love. He deals with this concept of brotherly love. He says, hey, how can you say that you love God who is in heaven, you have never seen him before. You've never seen God. But the person that you see every day, you have no love for. It is impossible to say that you love him and not love other people. This is the problem that we have. The problem that we have is that somehow we have gotten this thing twisted and we believe that as long as I love God, I'm good. I can struggle with you. I can have unforgiveness with you. I can talk bad about you. I can gossip against you and we're still good. But it, if, if all of those things are present, then there's no way that the love, that the love of God is also present. Mm. Yeah, that's it. If all of those things are present, it is not possible that the love of God is also present, yeah. right? Because the love of God compels you to love other people. Mm -hmm. It compels you to love people. And I wanted to use that word really intentionally because sometimes in our flesh, we don't want to. Mm -hmm. I wish I had a witness yeah. in the room. Yeah. Sometimes you don't want to. Yeah. But even when I'm, I'm, I'm about to step into my flesh and treat somebody poorly or what I, or maybe I did treat somebody poorly, but the love of God mm -hmm. compels me to go and correct it. Yeah. Right yeah. now. I, I felt good in the moment. Y'all know y'all feel good when you tell somebody off at the moment, right? Like you felt like I said everything I was supposed to say, I told them off good. And then you take another look. Yeah. Right. The love of God now corrects you and says, you can't leave that thing like that. Yeah. You were wrong. Right. Um, and what I love about God is that none of that is contingent on who's right and who's wrong in the initial part of the situation, wow. mm -hmm. right? None of that is contingent on whether or not they actually see the error in their ways as well. None of that is even contingent on if they love you back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of it is because mm -hmm. all of it is about you being a witness for him. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so if we are going to really show the love of God to the world, the Bible says that God so loved the world world that he gave notice that when he says that he loved this he so loved the world that he gave that that was not contingent on them loving him back that yeah. was not contingent on him on them actually receiving him because he knew that there would be people that he that were never going to receive him mm -hmm. but i love this world so much that i'm giving my life for all because he actually died for all yeah. unfortunately it's only some who will receive mm -hmm. but i gave my life for all and so in the same token he is asking us to do the same do we love without dissimulation do we mm -hmm. love um indiscriminately or do we love the people who are easy to love if we are loving people um based on how we feel that's not the love of god at all and our love needs to be perfected and matured mm -hmm. i just Two quick things. Well, I was thinking about the scripture that um, tells us to be slow to anger, slow to speak, and quick to hear. Yeah. And anger is a feeling that God still gave us. Yep. But it, it is that feeling. And um, even connecting it to everything that we've been talking about tonight, um, even about our speech and how our speech can have an oper like there's some sort of confession that is happening there right um the quick to hear in this context actually applies to listening to the spirit that abides mm -hmm, in you mm -hmm. so that you can love even when you are angry mm -hmm. even yeah. when you want to hate them even when they are wrong there's still something that you're not just hearing them but you're hearing him so that you can mm. actually mm -hmm. love right um, second thing is to connect going back to the um, loving God and loving people. I think what happens is that when you treat God like a fantasy, it that mm. is when wow. you reach the place where you can think that you are even loving Him and that you're loving people or your level or lack of love is okay because you have almost convinced yourself that you love him when he's really just a fantasy that you created. Wow. Mm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I think about um, the times when I've wanted to be unloving and even acted like unloving um, and how much like, like God is so good that the Holy Spirit will speak to you in that moment mm -hmm. and remind you of who you're supposed to be, right? Like I've had times where um, 
I remember I said to somebody, like, I just, I just want to be me. Um, and the Holy Spirit <laughs> said, <laughs> right? And the Holy, because you don't even know what that means. Yeah. Um, the Holy Spirit said, but I want you to be me. Wow. Right? Yeah. Like, I'm like, wow. you got your plans, but I got mine. Wow. Yeah. And how can I, the same people that you talk about that get on your nerves so much, how are they ever going to change if you respond the same way that everybody else does to them? Wow. Maybe the reason they have not changed is because they have not seen somebody treat them with love, right? Mm-hmm. And so some of the things that we are praying to God for and like, Lord, change their heart. Do, do it, Lord. Do it, Holy Spirit. Change their heart. Maybe if you approach them differently with love, that will be the catalyst change for their, their heart example. to change. Yeah, for <laughs> yeah. them to change. Um, and just how much grace there is in that moment because even I think about how much like people got to respond to me in love um, because I'm hard to love too right Um, but even that is a reminder of how much right like we should be that for somebody else because if it's that hard to deal with you if it's that hard to always have to be in relationship with you right but you are on the receiving end of love you know how much that makes a difference to you how much more does that make a difference to somebody else really good I just love how black and white the scripture is because he didn't say like you can't say you love God and dislike your brother. Like he literally said mm. hate and we try to like dumb down how mm. we feel about yeah. people. That's really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. And that's what Satan uses to mm-hmm. keep the blind on our eyes yeah. when yeah. it comes to the scripture. Mm-hmm. And I just thought about the times where I'm like, I don't hate nobody. And God yeah. is like, but mm-hmm. yeah. there is no lukewarm middle ground with yeah. me. Yeah. I'm like, wow. So it's yeah. like his thoughts being above our thoughts, all of that. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm being real. No, no I think you know. That's you, it. You, no, no, you're right. Cause, because it, actually, as you were talking, I was thinking about how our gauge for hatred, I think, is yes. off, right? Yeah. Because yeah. when you are the the barometer for how you mm. feel, oh, wow. <laughs> you're always going to raise the bar and 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 present mm-hmm. yourself as if. Mm-hmm. That's no, I don't that. hate anybody, but yeah. but what do your actions say, mm-hmm. right? When when I think about, I was thinking about how the Bible says that um, he talks about um, how we murder people yeah. with yeah. our mouths. Mm-hmm. If that is the the severity that yeah. the that the scriptures speak about how we talk about other people, if I know that to be true and I still do it anyway, I must hate you. Mm. Mm. Wow. Because I would only hate, I would only murder somebody who I hate. Yeah. Right? And so I think we, we need to really begin to change the way that we assess where we are because the assessment is the word of God. The assessment so is not good. how I feel. That's yeah. so good. Right? I know I don't I know I don't hold hatred in your heart. Yeah. The heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. The Bible says who can, who know, can it? know it. Mm-hmm. And so that is not my gauge. The gauge is how am I acting? What is my behavior? Yeah. Because my behavior will always tell the truth even when my mouth doesn't. That yeah. is so good. That's yeah. and I even think about um like when people say like I'm tired of being being the bigger person, right? Um, and nobody's asking you to be a bigger person. We're asking you to be a Christian. Oh, come and on. So if you're tired of being a Christian, that's another conversation, right? Another because the barometer is not a good person, like you said, because that changes. Everybody in this room can have a different definition of what a good person is. But the Christian, and we're not talking about uh, even out, we're talking about the words definition the word says, of yeah. a Christian. That's, that's very clear on what that is. And so if that is the standard, that is what we should be raising to, um, not our idea of what a good person is. I think that is so good and so strong. I think that could be life changing what mm-hmm. you just said. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I think that I've seen Christians say that yeah. and mean that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That I'm That's tired. Of, I, that, I that, <laughs> that I'm, I, I'm tired of being. <laughs> I'm tired of being the bigger person, right? And I think the real confession is I'm tired of being a Christian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm tired of being like Jesus. Mm-hmm. I don't want to Whew. be like him. And I think when you wow. say it the way that it that you yes. mean it. Yes. Right? Say what you mean and mean what you say. I think if we told it that way, I think we would hear how ridiculous it sounds yes. and we would autocorrect at yeah, that yeah. point. Nobody would have to correct us because we, and I think that is the problem. The problem is that we lie to ourselves, which mm-hmm. is why you cannot trust the words that come out of your own mouth. You can mm-hmm. only trust the word that comes out of what he said. Every word that proceeds out the mouth of God, that's what I believe because mm-hmm. I will betray myself with my oh, own yeah. speech. Mm-hmm. You're good. <laughs> good. All right. So on that note, right, this the, the, I want to just close with this. Right. This was a commandment. It wasn't a suggestion. Mm-hmm. Right. He didn't he didn't say, hey, you know, if if possible, like, make sure that you love people like that. That wasn't what he said. He said, yeah. look, 
if you have the love of God in you, the proof of that is how you love uh, um, other people. And so mm. I want us above everything else. We're so busy checking people's tongues. I want you to check your love walk. Mm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Don't check if I speak in tongues. Check if I love right. My Lord. Don't check if I can prophesy. Check if I love right. Because if I can I speak with that. the tongues of men and of angels, but it means nothing, nothing if my love walk isn't right. And so let's stop focusing on what is minor and let's focus on what is major. Yeah. Love was always the principal thing. And yeah. so with that said and done, I pray that you have a good night and I pray that you wake up trying to figure out how to love one another. Yeah. See you next week. Yeah.